How's it going, PD team? This video builds off my previous video where I showed you how to make an infinite shader switch. So I made this ridiculous shader switch node with 50 inputs for situations like image-based face rigs or large library of product labels and even color swatch libraries or data sets. The situations are endless. If you haven't watched my infinite shader switch tutorial, you'll want to watch that first. Link in the description below. This rig is available on my Gumroad and also includes a bonus face rig for small donations to the channel. The rig itself is time consuming to build and that's why I'm offering it on my product page for instant buy and use. It's kind of a pain. You'll definitely want to check it out, but I'll show you how it's made. With that being said, let's dive in. If you navigate to polygondivision.gumroad.com, you'll be seeing my page where I'm selling these node builds. And you can see we have the mega input shader switch node, which is what I'm gonna be talking about today. But then also I built out an IOR to metals preset node. You can see it does all the metals that are common as presets for you and it uses the same technology. So if we go back, we go here, you can see there's the 50 inputs and all the features. So this thing's kind of a pain in the butt it's only five bucks or if you want to donate more to the channel you're more than welcome to whatever you put down really helps keep this channel going so let's see how it works so once you've downloaded the product you can see here this is what you get so here's the node itself and you can copy this into projects or you can go to asset convert to asset and put it in your library for use how this works is you can see by default the selector has a it has a selector and a loop and then 10 input fields because we've put in the loop 10 fields Fields. So the selector, you can put an individual number. So if you're doing product labels, instead of an integer user data, which is linked to the cloner, you can just put a slider here instead, where you just pick a label or something like that, or you could have label names or whatever. So what you do is if you need 20, you can see I can just click here and you can see it now gives us 20 slots and I can slam it and get all 50 if I want. So we can just put this slider. So this loop is kind of your threshold where it cuts off. And so if you have more clones than this value, it just loops. That's why it's called loop. So how is this built? Well, here's your inputs. And if we go inside, you can see it's grouped up into groups of 10. So basically what I did is I made a shader switch, put inputs for all the inputs here, then linked them in, then duplicated it down. And then the, the second one gets the reset. So if you are not familiar with this, watch my previous video. Um, but this basically just resets it back down to one through 10 again. And then we linked it in. And then what I did is I went in and just renamed, renumbered these in increments of 10. So one through 10 and then 11 through 20. And then as I connected them, I just renamed them. So here they say one through 10 because it's easier to handle. And then we just come in here and rename it. And that takes a while. Then we also added the modulo in here in the selector, which allows for a the cutoff feature. So once it hits that loop value, it then loops back around. And that's kind of it for the shader switch. So let's see how it works. We'll go here to our view and you can see we've got just a camera that's set to to front view so we don't have any parallax or perspective and I'm going to load up the IPR and you can see we've got in one of these has a image texture built into it so you can see there's a texture input so what you're going to be mainly using this with is an input for a color swatch and if you do that you don't actually need to use this node here you can just come in here and just make your color um, but if you're going to have an image you have to load it up using a texture node and so if I go to the texture here and select this guy and go down to like three you'll see it's doing one two Two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. If I go to two, it's doing every other and alternating. And you can see our inputs here cut off as well. So really, really useful stuff. Okay, so that's the infinite shader switch. Let me talk about the face rig that's the bonus feature within this project. So I just used a Lego brick head as a demo. And when you select it, I defaulted the node to display. So if I go here to the node editor, and what I did is I selected this node, and you come in here and you say start node, so that whenever you have the shader selected, it goes directly to it. And you can see here, we've got all the mouth shapes for standard animation to lip sync, and then we have some facial expressions as well. So if I go here, so I'll load up the IPR, and you can see here's the AE, the O, the U, the R, so different mouth shapes for doing lip sync. And we've got some angry faces, one with a tongue, concerned, evil, joyful, confused, what, smug, smiling sad and so you can see it's just clicking through and it's the same thing and we can also change the color of the skin and these are based off of the lego brand swatches so same concept here uses the mega switch 
and we're just blending it. We've got a UV projection, color splitter to separate the RGB, and then we're masking it. And then we've got the skin tones. That's the base layer. And you can see it comes in here and we can make our selections of, this is just a standard shader switch. And then we link it into a, a group, which has these properties. So all I'm doing here is I'm just linking the selectors. And then when it comes to these here, you right click, edit resource, and you change the value to be a quick tab radio instead. So by default, it was set to an integer. And now we just rename these like so. That gives us this grid. So pretty simple stuff, just time consuming to build out. I think I spent the most time doing the textures. This took a quick minute, but you can see by default, when you link the texture, a PNG with transparency, you do have to, before it goes into the color layer, you have to pull out after the projection, the split layer to just pull the alpha out and use it as a mask on itself to get transparency to work. And so this is the bonus file. So when you download the file, you'll see when you go to the download page, you'll see two files. You'll see the input shader switch, and then you'll also see the this file as well, the Lego face rig. Now there's another product in there that uses the same technology. And if we go to the IOR, you can see when I select this, you've got the preset showing up first. And if we go to the node editor, when you download it, it's gonna look like this. And this is the node that you can save or copy and paste into projects. And so it's just a output node a standard shader and then some roughness and bump just to kind of make it visually interesting nothing crazy just super simple but its main focus is this here the IOR so you go up here to asset convert to asset and I'd rather you do this so that we don't have to handle dealing with your databases and things like that so I'm just giving you the node the working file so if you want to modify it or whatever you can so same concept you've got with IORs you have two input values you have the IOR and then the absorption so you'll need two of these shader switches but they're controlled by the same selector so in the selector input, you're going to put both in in the same one. And then again, I'm just changing this integer value in here to be a um, to be a selector. So you come in here and you right click edit port and you change it to quick tab radio. And the formatting is important. You have to put the label first, then a colon and then the number. So the number is the, what becomes the integer. So it spits out, it gives you a label and then spits out a value that goes into the selector. This was kind of a pain in the butt to do, but you can see here I went through the chart and plugged in each of the values for the IOR and then plugged in the values for the absorption and then they get merged into the IOR to metals tint. So again, this took a quick minute to build, but with a small donation to the channel, you can have it. So let's go ahead and see how this works. So I'll load up the IPR. With the file, I've set up a demo here with some overhead lights, side lights, and a backdrop, and then a shader ball, just so we get some cool reflections, some decent reflections. So you can see you can go through the aluminum, brass, copper, and these are physically accurate models. So you're gonna get realistic materials with this. And there's one interesting one. If you go here, if you noticed, there's a custom so this, you can plug in your own values. So if you want to do anodized aluminum and stuff, you can put in the values for aluminum into here and then just change the absorption color to give you these different colors. So we've got magnesium, nickel, tungsten. And these are mathematically accurate, which is really cool. So if you have a better scene, you're going to get a lot better results with this. Don't forget, if you're lazy like me and you just want to download the project files, we've got the two right here that I talked about, the IOR to metals tint and then the mega shader switch. So with the mega shader switch, you can go ahead and expand on it and just plug in those values that I provided in the metals demo that I have on my page. You can plug those values in yourself and make your own node. So go ahead and pick this up. It's a great deal. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you found this useful. Thanks so much. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on more content. Thanks for your support.